I've been using the iPhone 15 Pro Max since it's been released, and it's even become my daily driver. Honestly, I really wanted to return to this phone and give you some of my final thoughts after using it pretty much every day for the last couple of months. Here's the thing, I did not have a good start to the 15 Pro Max. I made several videos about this device getting too warm and crapping the bed, and it genuinely set this device up for failure for me. That being said, I did return it and try out a new 15 Pro Max to see if the experience was any different, especially after Apple's dropped the iOS update, which was supposed to solve the issues. And actually, it's been great. The iPhone 15 Pro Max has integrated itself nicely into my daily routine, despite it not being as cool as devices like the Pixel 8 Pro or the OnePlus Open. However, it does check some really important boxes for me, and that's why I've continued to use this phone as my daily driver. Let's just, like, start with the performance of this device, though. Now, here's the thing. There are two sides to this coin, and I'll get into that, but truth be told, the 15 Pro Max is the most powerful smartphone that you can buy. Maybe not on paper, but the A17 Bionic is extremely efficient whilst being stupidly capable of everything that you throw at it. Whether I'm playing games like Combat Masters and just trying to chill out, or doing some work inside of Lightroom and editing some of the photos that I took with my mirrorless camera, this phone just chews through everything. You kinda have to give it to Apple lately because they've really been on some voodoo magic with their Apple Silicon and it's been really impressive to watch. Kind of like my M3 Max 16 inch MacBook Pro that I've been using lately, this thing and this iPhone have just blew me away in terms of what they're capable of. Actually, if you want to see a video about the M3 Max MacBook Pro, let me know in the comments below. Leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel to get notified for when I do upload. This is something that I really want to talk about in a long form review because it's made everything that I do so much easier. But yeah, I mean the 15 Pro Max is just a powerhouse and not once did I feel that this model, my new natural titanium 15 Pro Max, was breaking a sweat. There is also some cool tech in here that Apple did throw in, which I think is really interesting. Like the fact that this phone can do ray tracing. Now, this is not something that I truthfully care about. However, depending on your field of work, this is something that you may actually be able to take advantage of. But honestly, it's kind of just a flex for what this smartphone's GPU is capable of doing. When it comes to using it in games, well, to be honest, I wouldn't really wanna play a full-fledged console game on this device like Apple's been touting recently. While I think it's really cool that this phone can do it, I think it's really impractical squeezing that down to a small screen like this, despite the fact that this is the largest iPhone that you can buy. I think that gaming experience with those console titles isn't really that great unless you use like a third party controller or something. You know what's better than cool to have though? This display. Despite it being very similar, there are a couple of things that make this stand out to me more than the 14 Pro Max though, and it does have a lot to do with the actual design of this phone, but let me run through some things that I actually like about this display. The 15 Pro Max does have a 6.7 inch display, and it has a peak brightness of just about 2000 nits when outdoors, which makes this a really viewable experience no matter what lighting condition you're in. It's an LTPO OLED display with a 120Hz ProMotion refresh rate, and technically speaking, this is one of the best displays in a smartphone, minus a couple of flagships that have recently released. But I think Apple nailed this display with the form factor of this device. You see, the device isn't as bulky or as sharp as the 14 Pro Max, being slightly more narrow, and having nicely curved edges which I think make it feel much better in the hand. That and the fact that this phone is 10% lighter than the 14 Pro Max genuinely does make it feel like a more comfortable experience. However, the display itself actually has a much smaller and even bezel surrounding it. And while we do have this stupidly large dynamic island all up in your face still, I think the iPhone is finally very competitive to modern flagships. And in my opinion, off of looks and form factor alone, I think it's up there in my top three that have released for sure. The color accurate display with a 2 million to 1 contrast ratio also does wonders for this panel when watching HDR content or even just doom scrolling through social media. It's just a fantastic panel and I'm really happy to see it. Now there's a couple of miscellaneous things which I also want to talk about, which are just a handful of changes that Apple's made to the iPhone that have changed the way I use this device and have made me appreciate this phone so much more than its predecessor. 
So Apple was forced by the EU to put a USB-C port on the iPhone. And despite Apple being one of, if not literally the first to bring this connector to the mass market, I think they really tried to hold on to Lightning for that MFI certification since it made them so much money. Though I'm glad that despite this ruling, Apple did decide to add USB-C rather than making this phone portless and selling MagSafe cables as an alternative because what it can do for you is something that an iPhone has never been able to achieve. The USB-C port on the iPhone 15 Pro Max is outfitted with USB 3 speeds at 10 gigabits a second. It's not Thunderbolt, but considering the iPhone doesn't have a DeX mode, I really don't think that this matters. However, the amount of bandwidth is perfectly fine for things like an external SSD or an SD card to record ProRes log externally. This is something that I've talked about previously in videos, but it genuinely has been a real game changer with this iPhone. We'll talk about the cameras later, but the iPhone is quickly becoming a mirrorless camera. It's actually really competitive, and I think that you could probably get away with using this for professional shoots if you really wanted to and you had that skill. So being able to offload these massive ProRes file sizes and have them be readable via any computer or device you choose to play back or edit from is solid. And you can also just outright transfer the videos you've taken internally on your iPhone directly to your SSD or SD card, which does make moving these larger file sizes way more reliable than something like AirDrop. And Oh, I almost forgot the action button. Yeah, I personally still haven't utilized this as much as I think I can with the ability to add shortcuts for custom controls, but I have leaned into it a lot more than I thought. It's winter now here in Canada, and I've actually been using this action button on some days for my camera and on some days for my flashlight because when I let the dog out of my house, or shoot photos outside when I'm wearing gloves, it just makes the experience a lot better. It's just a tactile response and it's right there on the device. I don't have to do any fumbling, take off my glove and be able to use my phone. It's just one push of a button. And when you enter the camera app, you actually just have this as a shutter button. So it's super easy to take photos when on the fly. Aside from that, the action button can get really complex. If you do decide to use the shortcuts app, I've seen people use it to open their garage doors or start warming their car. And honestly, for the extra utility that this single button can get you, I think it genuinely is impressive. Now, one of my favorite things about the 15 Pro Max has to be the cameras. The main 48 megapixel sensor is incredibly sharp and it now bends down to 24 megapixels rather than 12 to shoot really high quality photos. It's also incredibly capable in low light and in video. And I don't think there's any other phone that even comes close to what the 15 Pro Max is capable of. The five times telephoto is also a great addition. It's exclusive to the Max though, which does suck. However, it's probably my most used lens on this device. There's something about using a 120 millimeter equivalent on a phone that's this sharp with amazing dynamic range. You can get some pretty cool looking natural bokeh in your images and the color, especially when shooting on a sunny day, really makes it shine. Stabilization is also on point and switching to lenses doesn't cause that weird jarring step in that you're used to on some other phones. I would also easily take the iPhone 15 Pro Max's five times telephoto over something like the S23 Ultra's 10 times periscopic lens. And that's something that I noticed when directly comparing it to the S23 Ultra with my buddy RJ when we went to go film this phone day one. Now, I don't really think that I can end any video without talking about the battery life. And while I did recently make a video talking about why I switched to the iPhone 15 Pro Max where I did touch on this, I figured I'd talk about it just a little bit more. Here's the thing, it seems like no matter which smartphone you buy, you're gonna get a pretty decent battery performance now out of these flagship chips, solely because they're becoming so much more efficient every single year. However, I don't think that I've used a phone recently that's been able to touch on what I'm getting out of the iPhone in terms of longevity throughout the day or days for this matter. I do use my iPhone alongside an Apple Watch, so when it does come to you know interacting with notifications and some of the tasks that I do, that is kind of split up between these two devices. So I don't actually use this as much as some of you might. However, when I do use this phone extensively, I use it for about four to five hours, and that's screen on time. And that usage is able to get me through two days. Not that eight or nine, 10 hours of screen on time is necessarily impressive for a phone, but I think it really comes down to how efficient this device is and that standby time. It is also worth mentioning though that I don't use features like AOD because I think it's kind of pointless. I don't really care about my display being always on because if I want to use it, I would just interact with it 
it doesn't make sense to have it just sit there and idly drain the battery life and potentially burn in the display like we've been seeing with some models. So I just turn it off. But I have been really surprised by the performance of the 15 Pro Max's battery. And unlike the 14 Pro Max last year, I haven't been getting any reception issues, dropped calls, constant restarts, and a bunch of other BS that I dealt with using that device. In short, I really do think that the 15 Pro Max is worth the praise that it's been getting recently. I think that this is the best iPhone that Apple's released in recent years, and I think that it really does show when it comes to the hardware. Now, iOS still necessarily isn't exactly where I would like it to be, but I'm hoping it gets there one day because this phone is incredible. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, leave a like down below, subscribe for more content, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.